hello, and welcome to a very special episode, and the only episode, most likely, of Another Century's Episode R. This is a Japanese-only game that I imported, and uh, it's it's a it's a mech fighting game that's really fun. And I'll be doing one mission, which will probably take an hour, but I'll you know uh, edit it and stuff, so it won't actually be that long. And even though the difficulty does say easy, uh, this mission is not affected by difficulty, so yeah. Let's get right to it. Modifying program, final level. All system checks are complete. Combat mode is now engaged. Target verify, commencing hostilities! And if you've... If you watch any of my videos, you probably... There's a good chance you know what uh, Armored Core is. And if you know what Armored Core is, there's a pretty good chance you know who Nine Ball Seraph is. And in this game, you actually get to play as him in this mission. And that is what I'm, why I'm doing this. Alright, so I haven't played this game in a long time, so it's going to take me a while to get used to the controls. The controls are pretty weird for this game. If you've never played an, um, an uh, Ace R game before, or if you've never played an Ace game before, the controls are pretty weird, but once you get used to them, they're alright. So the basic premise of this mission is, you see that 10 that just appeared right there? Um, Uh, you have to kill a thousand enemies in this mission, which is a shit ton, and which is also why this game, uh, this mission takes so long. Every time you defeat, uh, every time you defeat 250 enemies, you have to fight a boss. And uh, yeah, there, uh, and you have to do it in one mission. Like there are no rests or breaks or anything. You don't get it. Actually, I think you do get some of your HP back when you beat a boss. But it's not really that big of a deal, because this game, because this is the most overpowered unit in the game by far. And I mean for good reason too, because it's fucking Nine Ball Syrup. So as far as his weapons go, uh, you see those bars right below my health? Those, that's my tension meter, I need those to execute special moves, like you see the numbers uh, below like next to those squares at the bottom right hand screen, like those require tension. Like the missiles or square, that requires two bars of tension. Now see, I lost two bars. But I get I get tension back really quick with my uh, blade. So you pretty much have like infinite tension. Uh, as far as other abilities goes, he has a cloaking device, which is pretty OP because Enemies cannot lock onto you while you're invisible. So even if you are, like, just god awful with this game, all you have to do is, uh... You know, just lock on. I mean, get three bars of attention and become invisible and just kill everything. But for sake of making this at least somewhat interesting, this is the only time I'm going to be using the ECM. Besides, I want to look at Nine Ball Zero. Freaking sexy. Uh, let's see, his other moves. Oh yeah, he has... Oops. He has, uh, I forgot what these things are called, EO, Exceed Orbits. And he has another type of Exceed Orbits that'll go directly to enemies. Uh, once you do beat a boss, after you kill 250 enemies and beat a boss, uh, the enemies in this stage will uh, get harder. Like right now, I'm just fighting like little drones in the air, and then uh, those little robots on the ground. But as soon as I beat like the first boss, tuple enemies will spawn. And the same is true for when I beat the boss after that.
Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, he also has his infamous, uh... Those things, I forgot what they're called. God, I haven't played an old on a core game in forever. Uh, Blade Waves, maybe? Those are like a one-hit kill on every enemy. He also has a Primal Armor, I guess, is the, is the best thing I can call it. All I have to do is hold circle and pretty much nothing can hurt me. See, that's not even doing any damage. The only thing about it is I cannot attack while the Primal Armor is up. So it's a good, like, an approach tool. He also have, like, has... He transforms into his flight mode and dives into an enemy. Like that. And, of course, his famous missiles that you can uh, use in that form and in this flight mode. Oh my god. I hate inverted controls. There we go. The only thing you can do in flight mode is fire missiles and your machine gun. Alright, so I'm probably going to skip right now to uh, when I get to the first boss. Alright, so here we are at our first boss. I have no idea who she is, but she's gonna be pretty much wrecked in a second. So yeah, I have my primal shield up, so she can't really do anything. Doesn't look like she's even trying to do anything. Oh, there she goes. That didn't do anything. So let's moonlight her some. And he does have more... I've been waiting to use... Oh wait, I need more... Block. These are some of his other abilities. I'm gonna try to charge this out of the way. Hopefully she doesn't move. Oh my god, are you serious? Alright. Need to get some tension back. Alright, well let's do... Every machine has something called a limited break, which is like their special move, and this is 9 balls. Oops. Yeah, she's already dead. Alrighty, that's 250 down, 750 to get home. So, different types of enemies should spawn now. I need to get, yeah, and I got some health back too. Yep, these guys with axes. They'll lunge at you. Although, it really doesn't do anything if you have your shield up. Then you just slice them back and get all your bars back. Alright, let me try this again. See if I can do it with us. The attack is different depending on how charged you're... Oh my god. Let's try this one. That's another one of those attacks. I'm just going to charge this to one. If it's one bar, then it does that. Two bars, does it in a spread pattern. And, uh, see if I get some attention back. Fully charge this attack. It shoots out a beam. 
so that's pretty much all a nine balls attacks. I'm pretty sure he has the most attacks out of every uh, mech in this game. He has the two type of exceed orbits I have out right now. One first type is circling me, the next type uh, goes after enemies. So yeah, this uh, nine ball is pretty OP. Go figure. Alright, So since we have so many enemies to go, I guess I can talk about uh, my experiences with Armored Core and stuff. The only reason I got this game... Like, this game is pretty much a mashup between a lot of mech, uh, animes, games, and other stuff. Like, this, uh... Play as the robots from Full Metal Panic, the Arbalest and stuff. Uh, Zeta Gundam, Gundam Seeder in this game. I think there's like an anime called OG or something like that. In this game too, I don't know, I've never seen it. Um, yeah, the only reason I got this game, this, this it didn't cost that much to import it. It cost like 40 bucks to import it. But the only reason I got this was because to play as my ball serum, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Which it is, I mean, let's be honest. To unlock this stage though, like there are eleven there are eleven different routes in this game. I guess with like eleven different uh, stories or whatever. But you have to beat all of them to get access to the mission, to this mission. And the worst part about it is, like, for every route, only like three or four missions are unique to each route. Like, once you go through that uh, route's, like, four, the beginning four missions, like, all the paths uh, begin to, uh, like, form into one. So, you pretty much do, like, every time you start a route, you do four new missions, and then you do the same eight missions that you did in, like, the previous routes. And it can get really, really irritating. Like, doing the same mission over and over again. Which it was, but... I mean, how else are you going to play for people, right? Get out of here. So yeah, that's pretty much probably the only... Although, that's pretty much the only reason I got this game. But, I mean, this game is still fun. I like it. Um, I first got into Armored Core when I was a kid. Uh, my older brother had a PlayStation, and uh, he got like you know the PlayStation demo disc with the demo for Armored Core. Uh, I think there was some other stuff on it. I think the Spyro was on it too. Uh, Oh, another cool trick is you can just send out all your EOs and just shield the whole time so they can't even do anything to you. <laughs> they just blow up. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, that's my brother got that demo disc and I played it and I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I didn't really think much of it at the time. It wasn't until my brother rented Master of Arena that I really, like, fell in love with the series. Like, when I saw that opening for Master of Arena and the song uh, Apex and Circle, like, I mean, that was it. I was pretty much in the series. Although at the time, since I was a kid, you know, I was terrible at the game, and I couldn't even beat it. I couldn't even get to the end. So... Uh, after a while, since I couldn't beat it and everything, I pretty much just lost interest. And, uh... It wasn't until, like, I was at, I was at, like, a blockbuster, like, looking for games to rent. 
fucking shows you how old I am. Fucking blockbuster. Um, and I saw Armored Core 3 there. I was like, you know, I really, I really used to love this series. I'll, uh, might as well give this game a rent. So, you know, I played Armored Core 3, and once again, like, that intro scene for Armored Core 3 was just so awesome, so amazing. That it pretty much, uh, brought me back into the series. And then after that, I pretty much bought, uh, every single Armored Core game. Luckily, at the time, GameStop was still taking PlayStation games, so I was able to find a Master of Arena, Project Phantasma, and GameStop, along with, uh, Armored Core 2 and Another Age. I think this was right around the same time that uh, Ninebreaker came out, actually, for the PlayStation 2. I was really... I was really disappointed in the Ninebreaker. I mean... Given how awesome Armored Core's, uh... You know, like, intro CGs are, like, I was expecting something awesome with Ninebreaker, but it ended up just being, like, a bunch of, uh... A bunch of... Oh my god, I don't want to do that. A bunch of, uh, well, these things are really cool. Like a bunch of scenes from the game, like a bunch of ACs fighting in game. I was expecting some cool intro scene. There wasn't even any story in Ninebreaker. It was just a bunch of training programs and arena fights. But then Last Raven came out. And that game was phenomenal. That was, uh... I think Last Raven, Silent Line, and the Master of Arena were probably the hardest on my core games that I've played. Then, oh god. I remember, uh... I remember watching the, um, I think it was an E, an E, oh my god, an E3 trailer for Armored Core 4, the one with, uh, Noblesse Oblige, with those, uh, back weapons, and when I, once I saw that, I was like, alright, I have to get a PS3 now, like, before then, I didn't have a PS3 or Xbox 360, oh, I need some tension. Yeah, once I saw the E3 Armored Core 4 trailer, I was like, I have to get a PS3 slash 360 now. And that, at the time, the PS3 was still, like, fucking ridiculous, like, $600 or $500. And, you know, I was a kid, I didn't have a job, my parents didn't have the money for something like that. But when Armored Core 4 did come out, what I did was, um... I bought the game, even though I didn't have the system. And, a, um... My dad worked at a, um... A TV sales place, and um, at at that place over there, uh, they had like a PS3, I guess, to show uh, customers how good you know like game system looks on an HDTV or whatever. So they had a PS3 there, and I would take Armored Core 4 and just go into my dad's work and just you know play Armored Core 4. And, like, I would go there. Um, a few days a week, and I have to start a new file every time. But I didn't really care. Then uh, I realized that Armor Core 4 also came out for the 360, and uh, the 360 was cheaper than the PS4, so I ended up getting a 360. And Armor Core 4 and uh, I think it was Halo 3 were the first game to ever have for the 360. Then after 4, 4 Answer, of course, came out. I like 4 Answer a lot better than Armored Core 4. Just because it had the awesome arm sports. And, uh... God, these stupid things. It had the arm sports and the... I really liked the uh, Orphan story. Or the different paths, anyway.
yeah, Armored Core is definitely my favorite uh, video game series. Even though it's like one of those niche titles. Like, there's just... I don't know, there are so many things I love about the series. Like, the intro cutscenes always get me hooked. You know, a lot of people complain that uh, they're not an accurate representation of the game or something like that. I don't know. But, I mean, they're just there to fucking get you hyped to play it. And they have... Uh, like, I think one of my favorite things about Armored Core is definitely the music. Like, my, my parents, when I was a kid, my parents would always listen, listen to country stuff. And now that's, that's like all I ever heard from music was country. And I hated country, and I thought, like, well, this is all music is, and, you know, I don't even like music. Music sucks ass. Then I heard, um, Massive Arena's intro song, and I was like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever. Yeah, I have every uh, I have every Armored Core game except for Formula Frank because um, I don't have a PSP and I'm not buying a PSP. There, there actually was a there was a Formula Frank game for the PS2 in Japan, I think, but they canceled it, so it never got it never got to be released on the PS2. Which is a shame because I would definitely have bought it. Man, these things are so annoying. But yeah, the music about this game, about Armored Core, is great. The um, the, the customization is just ridiculous. Like I would spend hours in every Armored Core game, just you know. Uh, just customizing. Trying to find the best, uh, uh, the best combination of parts and stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, I really hope that the series isn't dead and that, uh, they announce an Armored Core 6 eventually. If they if they announce like I would kill to have an armored core game on PS4 or Xbox One. It, it'd be a PS4 for me. I'm not gonna play Xbox One. I don't have a PS4 or Xbox One, but if they do release armor, if they do announce or release Armored Core Six, then that'll be that'll be the game to get me to buy a PS4. It's weird when, like, people ask you, like, uh, why do you, you know, like, why do you want to buy a PS4 slash Xbox One? Most people say, oh, I want to play the new Call of Duty, or, oh, I want to play the new uh, Halo, or Charger, or, you know, whatever. People ask me that, it's like, oh, why do you want to buy a PS4? Oh, I want to play Armored Core. What the fuck is that? Yeah, that's just that's how much I love the series. Same thing with Bayonetta too. Like I had no, well, I was probably gonna get a Wii U eventually, but Bayonetta two was the game to make me actually go out and buy one. Same thing with Armored Core. I'm hoping Front doesn't uh, ditch the series, but I do hope they change it from Five and Verdict Day. I mean, 5 and Verdict Day were alright. It still has that, you know, the great customization options. Um, there's still a lot of great music in Verdict Day and then 5. But I just... Another thing I really liked about the Armored Core games was the missions. They were so fun. The single player missions. And this is more so in Armored Core's 1 through Last Raven. My problem with the missions in 4 and 4 Answer was like the back, like the environments were just, they were just like so empty and flat and boring. And the missions weren't that much better. They had some, they had some good environments in 4 and 4 Answer, but for the most part they were pretty boring. 
they were like either desert with some buildings in them or uh, just built water with buildings. And another thing I really like about the Armored Core games is like, you know, um, like exploring facilities and buildings and stuff. I don't think there's, I don't think at any point during 4 or 4 Answer, or 5 or Verdict Day for that matter, do you actually like go inside a building or a facility or anything like that. And I may be, I'm probably forgetting something. I'm sure someone will correct me and be like, oh, you go on a building on this mission. But I'm saying for the most part, there aren't many, very many missions like that. And neither... And you never, like, go and explore, like, these buildings either. You're usually just in there to fight some AC or something, like, in, uh... uh what's that mission for, answer? It's, like, the last mission in the Orca arc where you have to fight Win D and Ro Roy was his name? Like in the Arteria chamber, you're just like, you go forward a little, a little bit, and then you fight them in the chamber, and that's pretty much it. You know, there's no there's no exploration like there was in some of the other facilities in the past Armored Core games. There's no like hidden parts you can find or anything. Although I know there is scrap parts in, in 5 and in Verdict Day. But, to be honest, I'm not even sure how the scrap parts work. Like, I'm pretty sure you don't even have to find the scrap parts. You can just uh, get to a certain player rank and unlock, you know, whatever the part was. God, this thing was so annoying. Alright, here's the second boss. Let's see if I can get this off. Oh, I'm fighting myself. That's a bad thing about that move. It doesn't... It locks on to where they were. So, you'll pretty much miss. Get some more tension out of it over here. Alright, that didn't even hit him. There we go. Wow, that almost killed him. Did that kill him? <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, in my opinion, the missions in 4 and 4 Answer aren't up to par with those in the pet in the previous games. Like one of my I still I still one of my favorite missions in Armored Core 3, for example, is the one where you're on Fuck was oh okay. Was in in Armored Core Three. There's this mission where you have to go inside a boat to retrieve like some capsule. And like during the middle of the mission, um, the boat's like in the middle of the ocean and it like it cracks and water starts to seep in. And then you have to you have like a time limit and you have to get out of there before you're like submerged. And there's nothing special, like, you know, like this water slowly fills up, or anything like that. But the game made a great job of making it, uh, what the fuck is this thing doing? But the game made a great job of making you think, like, water was filling up in the ship. And, you know, making you think, like, oh my god, I have to get the fuck out of here. You know, it's just little things like that. Oh, and another another awesome mission was in uh, uh, three in Armored Core Three Silent Mine. Was um, I still remember the name of the mission? It's like Defend the Logs Laboratory or something, where you're outside above a, above a laboratory, and uh, the, the satellite that's in the um, and how many Uh, the satellite in the opening of the game starts shooting uh, beam cannons down on you, and you have to dodge the beam cannons while fighting all these other enemies. And it's just like, it was so good. Uh, 
you know, it, you were always on your toes trying to dodge the satellite cannons and try to destroy all these other enemies. And again, the music during that mission, I think it was... I think the song Silent Light played during the mission. It just made a fantastic job of uh, building up the tension and stuff. It was awesome. Silent Line also had one of the, my favorite songs, and, which is Artificial Line, which plays during the last boss fight and other missions. And, uh, let's see. In Armored Core 2, there was a mission where you actually had to infiltrate a battleship. You start on top of a battleship, uh, flying in midair, and, uh, you infiltrate it and, you know, fight, go through, like, fight through, uh, not really waves of enemies, but, you know, like, all the defense systems and stuff. It was just, uh, it was really cool, you know? And there's, like, there's none of those kind of missions like that in 4, 4 Answer, 5, and Verdict Day. When I saw the towers in Verdict Day, I thought, I thought that was, I thought that was really cool, because I thought we would actually be able to go in the towers. I mean, I still really like the missions in 4 and 4 Answer, and uh, to a lesser extent, 5 and Verdict Day, but I just don't think they're up to par with the other, with the older games. My other problem with Verdict Day and 5 was that they were way too multiplayer focused. Uh, five single player was, for the most part, forgettable. There are uh, very few things I remember about. A few missions in Avery play I remember about five single player, except the one where you had to fight the chief. I remember where he took like a. Uh, like a huge ass pillar and used it as a mass blade. And then there was another one where he shot like giga, giga cannons at you, like the ultimate we weapon giga cannons, and if he hit you once, you just died. Although the only reason I really remember that one is because I was frustrated that he kept on hitting me and I kept on dying. But, oh, whatever. Uh, Verdict Day, again, just way too multiplayer-focused. I never played uh, multiplayer in, like, any of the any of the previous Armored Core games, not even 4 or 4 Answer, just because, like, no one played it, and I don't really have an interest in it anyway. And I sure as hell didn't play multiplayer in the PS1 slash PS2 versions, just because... All of my friends were either uh, they were either uh, they were terrible at it or had no interest in playing it. So it was pretty much just me playing it. Although something I really like about four or about four answer and five and verdict day is the. Um, is the ability to do co-op in missions. I really like that. Even though, again, like I didn't, I didn't know anyone to um, who actually liked Armor Core besides me. So even like online, like it's hard to find uh, people you know who actually like that game. But uh, Armored Core Another Age actually had a co-op system too, where you can do a set number of, you can do a certain, you can do certain missions in co-op too, which a lot of people don't know. And I actually did that with my cousin, which was a lot of, like, uh, and that was a lot of fun. Although again, he didn't, he didn't know how to play the game, so. Uh, uh, he didn't do like he didn't like want to continue playing it or anything like that. So yeah, I've played and beaten every Armored Core game again, except for Formula One. 
I was thinking about... You know, I don't even know why these enemies, like, appear. Like, they... Like, they don't even attack me, they're just annoying. They take so many shots, and all they do is fly around. Like, they're not even threatening. Uh, let's see, let's see. Man, Nine Ball Seraph is also, like, one of the best bosses I've ever fought. He's really hard, yet... He's not cheap like a lot of other bosses can be, like a Ninja Gaiden 2, for example. It's so satisfied, satisfying to finally meet him. And in case you haven't been listening to his theme the whole time, it's fucking awesome. He gets my blood pumped every time that intro comes in. And he says, like, uh, what is it? Target verified committing hostilities. I was actually thinking of doing a Let's Play of, of either Master of Arena, Silent Line, or The Last Raven, or maybe Nexus 2. Man, Nexus was really good. I could probably spend an entire episode about uh, Nexus. The remastered missions in Nexus were awesome. Uh, I actually really liked the um, in the main story. I actually really liked the uh, like the political struggle between Mirage, Kisaragi, Rest, and Navis. It felt. I don't want to say real, but it was interesting. Like, I actually cared about like what was actually going on. Uh, the last, apparently, like some nine ball drone was the last boss in Nexus, which was, was kind of weird. I wish that could have been better in that fight, but. Uh, Yeah, it was it was really good. And I would use them before I had like iTunes and the internet and all that stuff. I would use uh, next the Revolution disc from Nexus as like a soundtrack or like a CD player just to play stuff. I, I rented it from Blockbuster, and when I found out like all the cool stuff in it, I immediately bought it off eBay. It's nice fighting enemies that actually try to attack you rather than just run away. Let's see if I can get some more I was thinking of doing a Let's Play Master of Arena or Silent Line. If I was doing one of Master of Arena, I was, I'll probably do it uh, without being uh, cheap or anything. And by that, I mean not using the Karasawa, because that thing is fucking broken in the 
first three armor cores. And to a lesser extent in two and another age. They really nerfed it in three though. I also wouldn't use any plus enhancements or anything just to make it extra hard. Yeah, if you want to see that or are interested in like another armor core game, or a let's play of another armor core game, just let me know because again, I have every single one of them except Formula I record every one of them. I already did a um a hardcore run through of uh, Verdict Day, which was it was interesting. I was really hoping that they would have brought back Nine Ball Sierra as a special sortie boss in Verdict Day because I mean they had they had um. They had a new uh, nine song. They had a new nine song as DLC in Mario. So it would have been perfect to have that for. Um, stop it. But only use that nine song in Verdict Day was for one of the missions, which we had to fight like some Unax and some ACs and stuff, and it wasn't even that hard. You can cheese. Ugh. Ugh. You can cheese that entire game, pretty much. Uh, with the right build. Like, it was, like that's, that game single player, like, once you have like, the right build, it's not hard at all. Like, I, uh, I should. I guess she's doing her limit break now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's it for you. 250 more. Got some HP back. And these will be the last wave of enemies. Luckily, these things are not... They won't fucking run from you. And, uh... They aren't annoying to kill like those shield enemies. I still have no plans to get a PS4, like I said earlier. Uh, the only game I'd ever want for it, or that, that I'd buy, is Infamous Second Son and um, probably Dragon Age Inquisition. Although I'd get that used because of the EA. Um, so yeah, so I have no plans to buy a PS4 anytime soon. Wii U, though, is pretty much killing it. I've been playing that so much when I'm not watching anime or other stuff. Only 100 left. 
try this thing. I don't know, I don't really know if that's worth five bars of attention. I mean, for five bars, I can use both types of EOs, which pretty much just destroy everything. Missiles are really good too. Oh wow. The cool thing with the Moonlight Blades, the Blade Wave, is that you can, um, once you fire one wave off, you can quickly switch to another target. Like that. Although, that didn't really work because he was one below me. And you can kill two two targets with one uh, blade wave. Like that. Although these things have a lot of HP. Usually those blade waves are one to kill. Another thing that bothered me about Armored Core 4 and up is that none of those games featured any biological weapons, which I thought were really cool. Like in Armored Core 3, you had to fight like a huge fucking spider that was on the ceiling. And I think Silent, Silent Line did have another huge biological weapon, too. I'm pretty sure Nexus and Last Raven did not have like a huge biological boss, like they had biological enemies. Like little spider things and some moths or something. But I'm pretty sure they didn't feature any big biological weapons. Like, Armored Core 4 and up didn't even have those. Which was a little, again, disappointing. Only 54. Luckily these things die really quick too. Or it's easy to get through them, I mean. This thing is really bad at turning. The missions are in Number Core 4 were really, really short too. Like, some of them lasted like seriously 10 to like 15 seconds. That's how short they were. Uh, it had some cool missions though. Like, in, where you had to destroy Rayleigh on its base by like destroying the beams or something. Or something. But again, you could, you could finish that with them. Like, 30 seconds if you really wanted to. They could have they could have done so much more with that mission, but they didn't. The missions in the older Armored Core games were just so much more fun. And they were they had they had more they had so much more variety too. And 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 in those missions you really you really never um you really never knew what to expect with those missions, like Sometimes your allies would betray you and start fighting you in the middle of them. Sometimes unknown enemies would appear and just fuck you up. They were just... they had so much more variety and they were so much fun. I know I'm talking a lot of shit about like Armored Core 4 and up, but I, I still really like those games. Like, I asked rank every mission in 4, 4 answer, verdict day. I don't think I did it with 5. So yeah, once I got back into the series with Armored Core 3, I've pretty much been a fan ever since. I bought every single game on release day. I got the uh, limited edition of Verdict Day, which came with the um, like an art book, uh, the soundtrack, and a um, a model kit. Although it's, I don't know, it's not a model kit. It's, I don't know what it is. It came with a robot, right? That's what I want to say. I really want to get a Nightball Syrup. Again, I don't think it's a model kit, but I don't know what it is. I really want to get one of those, but it's like a hundred dollars. I'd buy it. It's just I don't have the money right now. I have a fucking bigger school too. This should be the last enemy for the, for the final boss. Which is this thing. Which again will probably die pretty quick. I want to get some attention. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha 
already dead. Yep, that's it. That's Nine Ball Sierra. Hopefully he makes a comeback like this in Armored Core 6. You actually do fight Nine Ball Seraf in this game, but he's not he's not piloted by the AI Hustler one. He's piloted by some douchebag. I don't even remember his name. If you want to see if you want to see me fight him on very hard, which is the hardest difficulty on this game, which the mission I'm talking about is actually is affected by difficulty, unlike this one. If you do want to see that just let me know as well, and I guess I can do that too. Although it's definitely not as fun as actually playing as Nine Ball Seraph. Hopefully he makes a return in Armored Core 6, so he can destroy us like he's been doing since Master of Arena. And, uh, again, if you want, um, if you want to see any Let's Plays of a new Armored Core game with any kind of, like, stipulations... Like, uh, not using broken shit or anything, just let me know and I'll do it. I'm always up for a challenge. Alright, thanks for watching, and, uh, see ya.